Hey guys, I'm Liv and today we're doing my August reading wrap up. I've been doing these every month for a couple of months now and I'm really enjoying it. I love doing book content on here, I quite often lie. This month I didn't read a load of books. I did them on holiday, um, I went to Greece for two weeks so I didn't end up reading as much as I usually would. I read a grand total of seven books this month which is still all right. It's still more than a lot of people would read. Yeah, I'm going to talk about everything that I've read. I got two physical and then the rest of them were on my Kindle icebreaker. I read this um, in a reading three TikTok hype books, oh dear, three TikTok hype books video. So that will be up in the cards now. And this is by Hannah Grace. I really like this book. I was in love with this book. I can't even lie. And it's a hockey romance, which I haven't read before, but I really did enjoy and it was about Anastasia and Nate and Nate is a hockey player, Anastasia is a figure skater and it's a rivalry, frenemies to lovers. Actually, they both need to use ice rinks and at the school they are at there are two different ice rinks, one for the hockey players, one for the figure skaters and one day one of them breaks because of a reason you find out in the book and they have to share the ice rink. This makes the hockey players and the figure skates have to actually talk to each other and Anastasia and Nate meet each other. There's like a frenemy, enemy, but mainly frenemy sort of friendship there and it develops and it was amazing. Nate is one of my favourite book boyfriends, it's official. I gave this book a 4.75 out of 5. I really liked it, the spice was really good and it was written in a way that you actually, like it was actually nice to read. Sometimes spice in books isn't written the best, but this was written really, really well. I liked Anastasia, I liked Nate. I also liked the fact that there's always like a bit of a conflict in a love, in like a, a book that's about like a love, a romance book, a rom-com. There's always a conflict towards the end of a book where it's like, this is a reason why they potentially couldn't be together. But the reason in this book I actually enjoyed, it was actually one that I was like, okay, I understand how this could happen. I understand why this could be a reason. And I also liked the fact that Nate's character didn't just like jump to conclusions. He actually acted like a, a normal person and he would trust Anastasia with certain things. I enjoyed that. I also liked Ryan, Anastasia's friend in the beginning and then became to be like her friend. Also liked Girl in it, the friend that she's got. I can't remember who it was. Um, I liked Nate's backstory, his family. I liked Anastasia's backstory. I loved the whole book, it was amazing and definitely enjoyed. Uh, go watch that video by the way because that's me actually talking like I take breaks in between the book to like update you on how I feel about the book uh, so go check out the video it'll be in the cards now but yeah overall I really enjoy this book don't be deceived by the fact there's cartoon characters on the front do not be deceived it is a spicy book <laughs> quick thing I've just found my review <laughs> and I'm look I'm skim reading it yeah, I put, if you, if you like um, Twisted Games, you'll like this book because it's one of those books where Nate actually didn't do anything wrong <laughs> compared to other books like Twisted Love and stuff, even though Twisted Love, Alex Volko will always be one of my faves. If you want somebody who's like Reese um, in a way that he not, doesn't actually do anything wrong, then this book would definitely be for you, would recommend. I also think that the praise in this book was um, brilliant. I loved it. <laughs> And uh, I also think he's one of the most respectful book boyfriends in my opinion. I really, really liked him. I thought he was a really brilliant character. I love the hockey team. They were amazing. I was howling at the hockey team. They were just so funny. Overall, I put at the bottom that I enjoyed how we heard nothing about their lessons. I feel like with high school books, sometimes you get really bored because they start talking about what happens in lesson time. And it's like, no, no, I don't care. I don't care. I just want to hear about their love interest and their, their romance and the stuff that actually matters outside of the lesson. I don't want to learn about lessons. Next book I read, was on my kindle and this book is called the ritual so this book was by chantelle tessier and i gave this a 4.5 out of 5 and i read this over the span of three days this book was a long book that's the first thing i'm gonna say um this book was i think about 600 pages ish um very long book for a dark romance and it's my second dark romance book i've read no, my third, because I've read Haunting Adeline and Hunting Adeline. I love those books. Go check out last last month's um, TBR up in the cards now if you want to hear about what I thought about those. I really like this book and Riot is a really good dark romance character. I really enjoyed him. I really enjoyed him. That sounds really weird. I enjoyed his character in this book and I enjoyed the romance between Brooke and Riot. 
it is a dark romance so it's not going to be the healthiest relationship in the world and there are sections where you go what the hell but you have to remember it's a dark romance and it's meant to be slightly on the edge of morally incorrect <laughs> or in hunting adeline and haunting adeline completely morally incorrect i've written in this review i always like to do a little review after i've read a book because then i can remember exactly how i felt after reading the book because sometimes like you just forget little bits and pieces so overall i liked the first three quarters of this book i liked the chase between brooke and riot where it wasn't exactly a chase it was kind of like it was forbidden and they wanted each other but there are things first that have to happen before they can have each other um i loved the idea of the lords and everything so i'll give you a, a skim run of this book so this book is about riot who is involved in a society called the lords if you're born into certain families you're already basically a, kind of expected to be in these societies in the society if you want to be with a woman after your training um you cannot be with a woman for i think like three years or something um and then afterwards a girl of your choice can take part in the ritual which is a ritual in which a woman would surrender herself over to you and only you and she's only allowed to be with you unless you decide you want her to be with other people yourself and you get to keep her as long as you want until you want to give her away at the same time there are people who um, will assign marriages to girls and they will sign agreements and forms and once you have made one of these marriages um you basically are in it for life and um yeah it's one of those books where the guys rule and the girls are underneath and it's like morally incorrect and the breaking away from things like that and there are characters that are making these arranged marriages and they don't want to be together um yeah it's it's yeah it's, it was a good book and if you read it you'll understand what i mean <laughs> I loved the Lords and I loved the whole ritual situation and that whole side. There are a lot of kinks explored in this book so if you are okay with the trigger warnings then you should be okay with this book. There are a lot less trigger warnings than Haunting and Hunting Adeline. Those two books are like off the charts with spice so any dark romance I've read now really doesn't phase me too much because of those books. <laughs> I said i like the first three quarter of this book however i did feel like the last quarter kind of dragged a little bit i felt like it was dragging a bit and i personally didn't enjoy the plot twist um there was a little twist at the end and i liked the first half of it but the second half i just felt a bit like why why did this need to happen at the end more detail about the book um raya and brooke um barely know each other when all this stuff when the ritual happens and everything um and she is dating somebody else and she is set to marry somebody else and she chooses that she wants to spend time with somebody else before she has to surrender herself over to this person that she's meant to marry once her and riot start their relationship and start this taboo relationship together they start to realize that she doesn't really want to marry this guy and she doesn't care that she has to and it's what she's basically been told she has to do she's, riot also agrees and he doesn't want her to marry him and it's all about that and it kicks off from there it's a really good book as i said and i loved all the the other characters in it but as i said the last quarter of the book i did feel like i just wanted it to end i was sat and i do remember reading it i was <laughs> literally sat there and i was like god how many pages have I left a hundred a hundred pages left god like i do feel like the story could have ended like way sooner than it did I also liked the runaway scene. I thought that was a really good scene, just saying. And the spice scenes were very good. I've read romance books for so long and I went on to my thriller phase and the next load of books are all thrillers. So the first thriller I read was Never Lie by Frieda McFadden. I have read a couple of Frieda McFadden's books before. I've read Ward D and what else did I watch? The Inmate. 
much. I read the OMA. Uh, again, go check out last week's, last month's reading wrap up to see what I thought about those books. But this book I gave a 3.5 out of 5 and it took me four days to read this book in total. So this book was about, um, it's a two sort of a dual timeline storyline. So the first timeline we have is, what are they called? Oh, I didn't write any names, brilliant. Thanks, Liv. <laughs> so the first timeline is that this couple wants to move into this house that is up for sale and they got there and it's been snowing and the real estate agent isn't there. And so they decide just to stay there because their car has been snowed in and they can't get anywhere. And when they're there, they start finding little bits and pieces of it worrying around the house so they keep hearing creepy noises uh they take a the picture of the therapist off the wall because it's a bit creepy uh, there's a like a portrait of one done and they took it off the wall and the next day it's put back up on the wall there's creepy noises and the woman in the couple opens a secret door by accident and finds all these tape recordings that the therapist took of all her patients and she takes these tape recordings out and starts listening to them because the therapist disappeared quite a while ago her body was never found and it was well she was ruled missing and there's a closed case because nobody knows where she went nobody found her and so they had to give up on the case she's looking through these tapes trying to hide it from her husband because she doesn't want to make it doesn't want to make him feel weird or make him feel like she's snooping around this woman's house. Um, there are plot twists and we find out on the dual t timeline about the therapist and what actually happened to her and what happened with all her patients. And it's really good. I personally enjoyed the therapist timeline more um, than the now timeline. I just, I just found it really interesting. And um, yeah, it was really, really good. Her patients all have something that they're dealing with or a disorder that they're dealing with. And um, yeah, it's really interesting. There's plot twists, loads and loads of characters, and I really, really enjoy it. However, I feel like this book did go downhill at the end. So the plot twist at the end of what actually happened to the therapist, I did like until the very, very end of finding out the whole thing that happened to the therapist. Um, it just felt a little bit easy, the very ending. Um, it was a little bit like, oh, okay. But then when you looked at the stuff that had happened in the start of the book, it didn't quite add up for me. It didn't quite make sense. Um, and it just felt like the um, end result had kind of been decided after they've written half the book. So um, yeah, that's a bit disappointing. So would I recommend, I think, yeah, if you're looking for something to read, it wasn't brilliant. I did enjoy it and it was a fun little read. It wasn't too long, it was about a 300 page book. So yeah, 3.5. I read was a physical copy and this was a brilliant book. So this is In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. This book, oh my God. This book was brilliant. I, I loved this book. So I'm gonna read you the blurb of this book because it's here and I can just read it out to you and this sums up what the book is about. Um, so, six friends, one college reunion and one unsolved murder. 10 years after graduation, Jessica Miller has planned her triumphant return to Southern Elite Decatur University down to the envious whispers that are sure to follow in her wake. Everyone is gonna see the girl she wants them to see. Confident, beautiful, indifferent. Not the girl she was when she left campus back when Heather Shelby's murder fractured everything, including the tight bond linking the six friends she'd been closest to since freshman year. But not everyone's ready to move on. Not everyone left Duquette 10 years ago, and not everyone can let Heather's murder go unsolved. Someone is determined to trap the real killer, to make the guilty pay. When the six friends are reunited, they'll be forced to confront what happened that night and the years worth of secrets each of them would do anything to keep hidden. Really good book. As it said, this book is about a murder of one of six friends. And, well, is it six? I think it was seven. Yes, yeah, seven. <laughs> one of seven friends is murdered. And this is Heather. This happened when they were in college together and we never found out exactly who was actually the murderer. It was assumed that her boyfriend did it and that was it, that was the end of it. But nobody was actually convicted because there wasn't enough evidence. When everybody meets up at a college reunion, bar the boyfriend, because everybody's a bit skeptical of him because he is the alleged killer, everything kicks off. 
something happens where all of the six friends' secrets come out on display. Every single one of them has a really strange link to the night that Heather died. And all the secrets about what happened that night and the nights leading up to it come out on display so that they can all clear their names or reveal if they were the killer. It was really good. The person who was revealed to be the killer, I was not expecting. I absolutely adored this book. My favorite characters have definitely got to be Cooper and Frankie. I loved Frankie, he was adorable. <laughs> and I really liked Cooper, he was one of my favorites. The story was amazing. It's told in different timelines. So you do get Frankie's perspective, Minty's perspective, Cooper's perspective, um, Jessica's perspective, Heather's perspective, etc, etc, etc. You get everyone's perspective on whatever secret they're trying to tell. So when it's their turn to tell their secret, it'll be told from their perspective. And I like that. Um, also liked how um, the person who was questioning them all, I liked how they were linked to everything. And each person's secret didn't just come out. There was always a reason. So for instance, none of this happened in the book, by the way, what I'm about to tell you, so it doesn't ruin the book. For instance, if let's say you had one glove and the other glove was found with Heather when she died, that would be mentioned that wasn't that with Heather when she died. And then your secret would come out. It wasn't just like, oh, here's my secret. It actually linked. I really like the storyline. Um, I loved it like a lot. It was brilliant. But I also loved the fact that we got the, the insight to their friendship as well, because it can be easy just to show the secrets and all that stuff. But it's really important to show the storyline and the friendship that these, these friends had, because then you understand the dynamic of the friends. You understand the rivals and what all their places were in the friendship. Because in a friendship, you've always got like the quiet one, the loud one, the gobby one, the one who's like the mum of the group, the one who's a bit reserved and quiet, the one who's got secrets. And that's what we find out in like throughout the book is what their dynamic is in the group. And we see a lot of them throughout college growing up. Nice things too, like that had happened that made them all bond together. It was a really good book. And I gave this book a five out of five. I would recommend this book in a heartbeat. It was really, really good and I really enjoyed it. Um, let's see if I can read out any of my review. <laughs> Cause sometimes I do put spoilers in her. Yeah, my favourite characters, as I said, were Frankie and Cooper. Uh, I thought the characters were really well developed in this book and I love the secrets. The storylines being woven through the entirety of the book was really good. Um, I've written all the, all the secrets here, so I cannot read them out. <laughs> um, I enjoyed how the secrets were revealed, as I said. The reasoning behind the kill was brilliant. Not saying that I, you know, endorse the killing at all, but I think sometimes the killer's reasoning can be a bit like, what? That was your reason? This, the reasoning for this was really good. And I loved how everybody was, had like some sort of an involvement that made them look guilty. I liked that. Um, I loved the ending and I liked the extra plot twist. So we have the reveal we have who did it we have all the reveals of the secrets which all have an impact by the way all these secrets have an impact on everybody and i also loved the plot twist and the extra plot twist there's an extra one at the very end literally like the last page and i was like mm -hmm. oh it's coming to an end wait what <laughs> i literally looked at it and i went what what <laughs> It was really, really good. Um, I also want to tell you how many pages are in this book uh, because, yeah, the last line, I was just like, what? even reading it again, I'm like, wow. There's 315 pages, which sounds pretty short, but it was brilliant. It flowed really well. It was a really, really good, it was written very well. Um, but yeah, as I said, it flowed really well and I loved um, the timing of everything. I didn't, there wasn't a dull moment, basically. Really good, would a thousand percent recommend. Next book I read was He Is Watching You by Charlie Gallagher. And I gave this book a 4.25. So this book was about a murder and it's a dual timeline of a murderer and a detective. In fact, no, it's not a dual timeline, there's three timelines. So well, a three perspective book. The first chapter, as I said, is from the killer's perspective and we get to see the killer kill their first victim. 
and we get to see it's the aftermath of after killing their victim and what they do with them and we get a couple details on where they are and where they could potentially be in the world and we get enough details that we kind of have an idea of the place that they are and yeah it's very very much in captivating very quickly and see the detective the future victim we get her storyline and we also get a few more perspectives from the killer and where they are and what they're doing in their house and why they're doing what they're doing Not really why but like how what it means to them the intro really caught my attention being thrown straight into the action was such a good decision it set the pace the killer was written in such a disturbing way no redeeming qualities of them and i was tense throughout the entire book unable to guess what could happen at any point the final storyline at the end and the whole chase with the officer and the um, killer was brilliant throughout the book obviously the officers are trying to find the killer and it's like one of those one of those chases where you're almost there it was almost in your grips and then the killer's gone or the clue is gone or your lead has gone it was really good and the thing about this book is you are finding out bits and pieces about the killer and you find them out before the cop does and it's the most annoying but brilliant way to have done it because you know things and you're thinking please just open the door no don't walk away and they do because they don't know the stuff you know because you've seen it firsthand from the other chapters really enjoyed this book gave it a 4.25 would recommend it was very very tense and i loved the whole thing and it is a part of a series but you can read it as a standalone if you wish to next book i read was the dancing girls by m m trunard or trunard not sure how to say that name i gave this book a 4.25 out of 5 this book was a bit different so this book again was a killer and a police officer um but we got three three um perspectives once again so first of all we have the killer again we see the killer's perspective first of all and we get to follow them and their killings why they're doing it and then we get the police officer's perspective and them trying to hunt down the killer find out why they're doing what they're doing um try and figure out if the killings are a serial killing case, which we know that they are within the first five seconds of the chapter. And um, the third storyline, the third perspective, sorry, was about the next person that the killer is trying to talk to. Really good. I really enjoyed it. I thought the thriller was enjoyable. Killer's perspective was so intriguing. Plot twist was very good. I have to be honest and say the police officers weren't as um, interesting in this one. I didn't really care about the police officers and I wasn't as invested as I usually am because I was really invested in the um, he is watching you. Um, I like the characters but I just wasn't as invested and I like the time jumps because they help the story flow. There are quite a few jumps where we see like the killer's childhood and it jumps forward. I will say for some reason the um the writer did give the killer some redeeming qualities and some like reasons that you feel bad for the killer um which i don't quite know if i agree with i don't really think i needed them i preferred he is watching you because you did not feel bad for the killer in the slightest you hated the killer whereas in this one you did feel bad for the killer for certain things that were happening but the plot twist at the end was really good really appreciated it i did think at first i was thinking something feels weird and then the plot twist happened and i was like okay i was right <laughs> um so yeah i would give it a 4.25 um it was good and the last book i read was one left alive by helen pfeiffer so i did give this book a 4.25 as well and again this is a killer and a police officer storyline However, with this one, we don't get any dual timelines. This is solely from the perspective of the police officers. So we get the um, two, well, we get three perspectives actually. Four, yeah, we get four perspectives. Um, so this is all in one timeline. There is no back and forths. Um, and we get the perspective of Morgan, who is the main police officer, Ben, who is her superior, 
and then we get some from Morgan's previous um, like person she worked with and we also get some perspectives from the mayor. So this book is, again throws you straight into the drama, we get a very high staked impactful thriller here. So this book is about a family who are murdered and something's a bit weird about the murder. The whole family has been killed apart from the daughter and they have all been killed in a very much brutal way. It's not one that was just, oh, they were killed because um, they wanted to take money from them or they just, they just, you know, it was a, a hit and run. It was a very thought out murder and clearly whoever did it was quite vindictful. So instantly the police are a bit wary of this murder. They're not quite sure if it's as black and white as it looks on paper, um, but Morgan has a feeling that something's wrong. The dynamic of Ben and Morgan and how their relationship blossoms and how they feel about each other. And we also have the character Amy, who is really funny. I really like Amy. And we find out clues along the way. We don't get a perspective from the murderer at all, which I did like in this instance. I thought it was really good. Um, it was definitely more impactful with this because it was so intense that you weren't quite sure what was gonna happen next. It was really good. And um, I liked all the characters in this and I liked the way things were found out. I liked that everyone underestimated Morgan the whole time because she was a new cadet. And I liked how we looked through old archived files. We looked at old um, cases that had happened around the area. And I really liked it. I did enjoy this book. And I also enjoyed how we saw quite a lot um, of information about the police officers as well. This is what I meant with the last book, that we didn't get much information about police officers. So I didn't really care about them as much, but this one I did. I wrote that this was a high stake, impactful thriller. I enjoyed this, I was very hooked. I liked Morgan, Ben and Amy's dynamic and the storyline was good. The flow of the book was really good and I never questioned where things were going. I found that I just liked the flow of everything. I also, this is a little mini thing, I liked the mention of multiple horror icons. So they do mention things like the Amityville House and Michael Myers um, and other, other stuff as well. And I also liked that it was set in England in sort of like a rural country area. I thought that was really good and I really enjoyed that because it was just, it made it even more spooky. It was like, oh my God, this is like a really rural area. This is the country that I live in. <laughs> uh, so I really did enjoy that. So yeah. That has been all the books I've read throughout August. I hope you have enjoyed. Uh, go check out last week's video and the videos that I've linked already in the cards. And I'll see you guys next time with another video. Subscribe to all that good stuff and I'll see you guys later. Bye.